Hi everybody at home. We're starting unit seven today, which is called the mole. Uh, but please go ahead and copy that down. Pause the video. I warned you that um, semester two of this class is highly mathematical, and that starts right now. Um, our units are pretty innovative with just a bunch of different math. But today, it's very easy math, um, in my opinion. So what we are looking at today um, is called molar mass. And it's, can you tell me the weight of a compound? All right, well, if I gave you salt, table salt, sodium chloride, and I said, hey, what's the total mass of sodium chloride? How do you think you would find it? Ah, yeah, you'd find the mass of sodium, and you'd find the mass of chlorine, and you'd add them together. That's what today is. Now, we also want to be able to find what's called percent composition, which is taking that compound and saying, okay, well, if sodium chloride has a total mass of 57 grams, um, what percentage of him is sodium out of the sodium chloride? Okay, well, what would you do? Well, you would find sodium's mass, again, and you would divide it by the total mass, the sodium and the chloride together, times 100, because that's how you find the percentage of anything, which I know you found the percentage of things since you were like in fifth grade, unless your teachers are all terrible. So that's kind of today in a nutshell. Now, before we go through a few problems on just adding up parts and then using it to find percentages, I do want to make sure you can count atoms. So when I say that, what I mean is, write down that compound. I'll write it down here. <coughs> the only thing that could technically be tricky today is if you look at a funky formula like this, and you're not able to count the atoms, right? Because like if, if I give you water H2O, okay, well, the molar mass, the total mass of water would be two H's and an O. So you'd have to add up H twice from the periodic table. All right, so hopefully that will be easy enough as we go. But when you see this, you've got to make sure that you can come up with that number. So here comes the big question. How many aluminums do you think there are in this uh, formula? There's one. That's correct, all right? Because a number that's outside parentheses as a subscript is only going to affect everything that's inside those parentheses. The aluminum's not, so there is only one of them. How many carbons do y'all see? No. 18. All right? Because now we are inside the parentheses, and that's where my subscripts outside the parentheses are ultimately distributing, all right, times everything inside. So they'll be multiplying. So three times six is 18. Therefore, how many hydrogens are there? 21. And as long as you understand how to count that item, then you'll be able to understand anything that I give you. And then you can add them up. You can say, okay, well, to find the molar mass, it would be 21 hydrogens, 18 carbons, and one aluminum the mass of each of those and just add them up. And then I'll show you how to find percentage. How are you feeling so far? Let's do three examples and see how long it takes. The board for them says dihydrogen monoxide. And now I'm going to draw cards and be mean. Let's get Aspen out there. Mm, all right. Dihydrogen monoxide. Let's go over to cluster four, seat three. Hey, four, three, can you give me that formula? Yeah, it's funky water, right? I mean, it's water. It's just, uh, it's the chemical way of saying water. D 
dihydrogen monoxide. Now, there's two different things I want you to be able to do today. I want you to find its molar mass, the total mass, and then its percent composition. What percentage of water is hydrogen? What percentage of him is oxygen? And we can do all of it in kind of one big series of steps. Ready? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split him into his elemental parts. So the two elements that I see are hydrogen and oxygen. One third of a Santa Claus. <laughs> I can still tell that joke in Jane Bond. All right. Then I count them like we did a moment ago. Hey, somebody in cluster three, any of you, how many hydrogens are there? Two. Very good. All right. And of course, there is one oxygen. Then, since I'm finding the molar mass, the total mass, I'm going to multiply those by their masses on the periodic table. So you at home, get out a periodic table. I meant to tell you that. My bad. Of course, the masses are the bottom numbers in the square, not the atomic numbers. And if you look up hydrogen, you'll see it's 1.008. And if you look up oxygen, you'll see it's 16 even. Everybody cool with those values? You all have a calculator, so you should be running arithmetic with me. Never trust me because I'm a big liar. Ask my kids. Tell them I love them. I know. Don't watch this video. It's a crummy way to find out the truth. Okay, um, two hydrogens comes out to 2.016. And one oxygen comes out to 16. Does everybody agree? It's nice to have these intermittent um, values because it's gonna be useful for the percentages. I know that all of the hydrogen has a mass of just over two. All of the oxygen has a mass of 16 um, because that, that, that will be useful when I know want to know the percentage of each. So it's good to track your work like this. But what, what should I do to those two purple numbers to find the total molar mass? Yeah, just add them up. All right, so 16 plus 2.016, I believe you're going to get 18.016. Now, the units here are something different for you. The units are grams per mole. The word mole has not been introduced to you yet, that's tomorrow. So just believe me for now, we have another lecture tomorrow where, where I will explain exactly what moles are. But this is the units always for molar mass. Sometimes my problems will ask for just molar mass. What's the molar mass of water? In which case, you're done, go on to the next problem, that's it. But all three of the problems we do in lecture today, I'm going to ask for the percent composition. And the only way you can find the percentages is to first find the molar mass. It's a part of that process. So let's just continue. What is the percent composition of dihydrogen monoxide? Well, watch what we do. I'm going to take each of the individual totals per element and divide it by that molar mass. Divide it by the total, right? Because a percentage is a part over a whole time. So I'll take 2.016 is his amount divided by 18.016 and then times 100. Oxygen's total was 16 divided by 18.016, the molar mass, times 100. And that will get you to our desired answers.
Now, little side note that I actually meant to mention. Uh, this is fine. You're going to get the exact same answer. But for molar mass, of course, this is called molar mass. Instead of following any kind of set sig fig rules, molar mass always just goes to do two digits past the decimal. So really, water's molar mass should have been rounded right here. Don't change it dramatically in your notes because it's not a big deal. But um, really, that's the value that like my AP students would have to use um, just to always two digits past the decimal. But if you run, if you move this red number into those two black numbers, you're going to get the exact same answer. So it's not a big deal. Um, but that's a good rule to have in your head. The percentages that I get are 11.19% alongside 88.81%. Did you get those blue numbers? Y'all, these percentages also follow those two digits past the decimal rule. So for both molar mass and percent composition, both of them just go two digits past the decimal no matter the way your starting values look. To say that again? Right here? Not 11.89 though, right? Yeah, no, so don't do that. Keep, just keep two digits past the decimal. Yeah. Those sig figs actually will be important, and they could have, um, for further calculations with those percentages, if you just totally drop the decimal places, it could alter other, other values. So in a molecule of water, about 89% of it is oxygen. Cool, right? Let's do another one. Let's draw some cards this time. Ammonium telluride. Ammonium telluride is what the board says. Let's go get some help. Let's go over to cluster five. Actually, I didn't make you get out your periodic, your polyatomic list. Uh, anybody know what ammonium is? It's NH4, all right? It's on your polyatomic list. You do not have to have that memorized. So that's ammonium, all right? Cluster five, sorry, C4. Hey, Aspen, um, what element is telluride? Ending in "-ide", because it's bonded. Do you know what the original element's called? It is T-E, it's tellurium, all right? So those are the two elements being built here. Sorry, our cars just got out of the shop, so having I have to let my wife know. Anyway, um, but this is an ionic compound that's being built uh, because it's a polyatomic bonding, which makes it ionic. Um, if you look at your polyatomic sheet, you'll see that ammonium has a charge of plus one. Let's go over to cluster five again. We'll try again. Um, seat five, we failed again. Hey, Aspen, what's the charge of tellurium? Negative two from group 16, right? It was a very short lived aspen. It'll be forever before you get him again. After spring break, probably. Um, hey, so 
right? A little secondary skill here. We need to build that compound, all right? And when we do, when you crisscross, you're going to end up with this. Do you agree? I hope you agree. So let's do our first thing, find the molar mass. Step one, tear the compound into its elemental parts, which is NHTE. N-H-T-E. Now we count. How many are there of each? Let's see if anyone's in the mood to do it. Cluster six. Seat one, it found you. Hey, six one, help me out. How many nitrogens are there? And how many hydrogens are there? Eight. And how many telleriums are there? Perfect. Everybody okay with those red numbers? All right, let's multiply them by their mass on the table. All right, let's go have some people grab them. Let's go over to cluster five. We're staying in the back of the room today. Um, seat three. Hey, Aspen, what is nitrogen's mass? 14.01. All right, um, hydrogen's 1.008. We already found him in the previous problem. You find hydrogen a lot. Let's go over to cluster one, seat three. Hey, one three, what is tellurium's mass? 127.6. Make sure you're all right with my purple numbers. You can start running the arithmetic. See if my black individual totals match the ones you got, and then we'll draw a card for the molar mass. All right, let's go over to cluster two. Now we're in the front of the room and talk to C5, but it's an empty seat. Uh, hey, Aspen, did you get a molar mass? Perfect. 163.68. What are the units, anybody? Grams per mole. You can pass the bird. Yeah, it's grams per mole is always the unit of molar mass. So that's how heavy one of these is. <clears throat> but what if that's not the question? What if it wants to know the percent composition? We just continue the process by dividing these totals per element by the molar mass times 100 because it's a percentage. So let's get that set up.
Let's see if anybody can give me just nitrogen's percentage. Let's go over to cluster two again. Can't find you this time. C6. Hey, 2 6. Um, can you give me just nitrogen's percentage? Yeah, I get 0.12, I think. Does it round up to 0.12? Yeah, so watch your rounding, but yeah. I get 17.12% nitrogen. And then I'll finish those other values with my data. Four point nine three percent, seventy seven point nine six percent. Anybody getting conflicting numbers? Yeah, sure. So you have to come say hi to the camera. You have to come say hi to the camera. They want to know who's using the restaurant. I'm just kidding. You don't have to. He had the worst quiz grade yesterday. <laughs> They won't even get that joke. They weren't here for before the video. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, this is pretty easy, yeah? All right, you do one and we're done for the day. I want you to find the percent composition of barium chloride. Those of you at home, if you're feeling left out by not seeing the board, they're doing barium chloride. Chlorides polyatomic. I wrote the formula for barium chloride on the board because I don't want that to be the reason that you're stuck. All right, but if you're bad at nomenclature, get good at nomenclature. All right, it's going to haunt you all semester if you still don't know how to turn that into this. All right, send me an email. Sir, I need the link for nomenclature. I need to watch that video. I will hook you up. All right, don't let this fail you. Let me know if you get stuck. Percent composition of everything.
Going to start trickling my work up here if you want to glance. No one's asking for help, so hopefully you're awesome. Someone verify that molar mass. You're good? Okay. I made a mistake before. Moving on to my percentages then. Divide the individual masses, total masses, by that molar mass. Times 100.
What should be true if you add up all the percentages of a whole? Should equal 100%. You actually have a way to check your work here if um, you have a bad history of just being bad at math. Um, and you just want to make sure you haven't slipped a decimal and one of them is like 10 higher than it's supposed to be. If you add up all of your percentages, it should equal 100%. Sometimes plus or minus 100, like 99.99 and 100.01 um, because of rounding. You're still good. Questions? Have a good day.